Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So today we have a evaluation we want to compute and the notation actually does look weird for anybody for first time viewers that actually this is the first time appearing in this channel. So if you can correct me on this, I think this is a weird way to how to read this, but I'm gonna read this as subscript two of f of sub one of our inputs one, one, two, z multiply with subscript two of f sub one of one, one, two of negative z multiplied by z square. So the name of this is actually known as it's, this is in the following of a hypergeometric function, an ordinary hypergeometric function. And it actually says with the following definitions over here. Okay, so the definition states as the following. So we have the infinite sum as n equal to zero of, so the parenthesis of a sub n, that's actually what's known as the rising factorial, commonly using with the pock hammer symbol, such that we have the parentheses of a sub n, parentheses b sub n, divided by parentheses c sub n, multiplied with z to the power n, divided by n factorial, with of course the convergence with the absolute value z being strictly less than one, following with this expansion, which says that we have x is equal to zero, then it's equal to one, but for x is strictly greater than zero, we have x times x plus one, x plus two, so it's finite for the rising factorial. Also keep in mind that for our inputs a, b, c, they can be complex numbers. However, be careful that c cannot be a negative, a negative integer, but it can be a negative real number, but just not a negative integer. Otherwise, this will be a divergent, so towards infinity. Okay. So with that definition in mind, so what we'll do, how I'm gonna outline this video is, first, what I wanna do is I might actually wanna find a nice closed form for the generalization of our hypergeometric function, the basic, not the generalized hypergeometric, otherwise we would have, if, that, if that's the case, then we would have different inputs for these two subscripts over here. So with this in mind, that we're gonna find a general form, there's actually a nice calculation that I actually wanna show off first, that it's actually a very interesting thing that classifies everything with the geometric series, and you'll see where I get to that in a sec. And then with that, we're gonna get into the, um, the actual meat of our calculations. So with that, let's actually find our little close form of the following expansion over here. So I'm going to continue forward with the equal sign saying for our, our basic or, or ordinary hypergeometric function over here that the expansion that we can write so far is of course 1 plus a times b divided by c then multiply with z divided by 1 factorial. So then the next term I have is a so using that definition of the rising factorial pocket hammer symbol in other words so a times a plus 1 then times b times b plus 1 then c times c plus one, then we multiply that by, now it's z square, and then divided by two factorial. So let me actually write a couple more terms and then I'll continue forward with more discussions that we want to analyze. Okay, so I really just wrote one more term because it's pretty long by itself using that definition of the rising factorial. So you'll notice that if we actually utilize this definition of the gamma function, we can actually rewrite this in a simple way such that the generalization of our ordinary hypergeometric function is can be written in terms of gamma functions. So notice that the expansion over here can be written as the following. So I have one and then plus gamma of a plus one and then divided by gamma of a so that's just actually utilizing the definition that gamma extensions are you know defined in terms of the factorial so we write this simply for in terms of a that's actually what we get from over here for well, the first term specifically then next i can now multiply with gamma of b plus one and then divided by gamma of b Next, we'll have for the C term, but since it's a denominator, so rewriting this a little bit carefully, I have gamma of C and then divided by gamma of C plus one. And of course, Z, we have that Z and then one factorial, that's just gonna stay the same for now. So one factorial. So you'll, know, you'll actually be noticing a pattern that we're actually gonna be doing the same thing for all the other terms there. So I think you can already guess like what's the next terms for the gamma representation of each of the following um, preceding terms so I'll just cut to the next part of expanding all that out in terms of gamma. Okay with that expansion written out so now I can actually write this as a generalization for the infinite sum. So the infinite sum of n is starting at n is equal to zero and then we have now in finite terms this is gamma of a plus n. Well I said finite for each one not exactly the, the upper index. Multiply with gamma of b plus n and then multiply with gamma of C. So all this being divided by, by gamma of A, then times gamma of B, then multiply by gamma of C plus N. I accidentally wrote a two, but my bad. 
and then now multiply with z to the power n and then divide it by n factorial. Okay, so now you see that we can actually factor out some stuff since the n does not depend on some of these um, variables over here of gamma. So I'll factor out a gamma of c then divided by gamma of a then times gamma of b. And then now we just have there our infinite sum n is equal zero of just what's left that's associated with the n terms. So gamma of a plus n then divided by gamma of b e plus n and then now divided by gamma of c plus n multiplied with z to the power n and then divided by n factorial. Okay, so actually that's our generalization over here that from starting from the beginning. So this is actually what can be written in terms of the gamma function. So up, uh, up in this box over here. So now here's the calculation that we want to do. And this is actually very interesting that the, this is the most like special case. And that actually gives us, you know, the more of a hyper geometric class for the geometric series and that stand alone. So the calculation that we're dealing with, well, that I want to show you, not that we're actually getting to that just yet, but eventually. So we have subscript of two of f sub one of now our inputs are going to be one comma one then semicolon so i shall also address that the semicolon does matter in the situation that's why the hypergeometric series if the generalized class that depending on how many numbers of our inputs being depending on what the subscript is matters so here is two so it only takes in our first input for a and b and then one for c so now that means semicolon and one another semicolon and then our input which is going to be z this is what we want to calculate so if we actually just use our generalization over here in terms of gamma we can actually now substitute some things so a b c is equal to one so now let's just plug in so i have gamma of one then divided by gamma of one times gamma of one then multiply so we have our infinite sum n is equal zero of gamma of one plus n and then multiply with gamma of one plus n divided by gamma of one plus n, and then now just multiply with z to the power n, and then divided by n factorial. Okay, so obviously you're gonna see some things cancel. So gamma one's cancel, but also another thing that gamma of one is simply just gonna equal one. So this is out of the question, so that's just one by itself. And then now we'll see that inside of our, our sum that we have gamma of one plus n being canceled out. So now that's just left with, so zero infinity, and then gamma of one plus n, then multiply with z to the power n and then divide it by n factorial. Notice that gamma of one plus n, we can actually use that extension to say that that's actually equivalent to just n factorial. But guess what? The n factorial is cancel both from the numerator and denominator. And all we're left with is just n equals zero of the infinite sum of z to the power n. And guess what? We all know that that's actually the form of a geometric series, which is set to equal to one divided by one minus c. Okay, so that's great. But here's also a very interesting thing. So in fact, if you actually just let A equals one and then B equals C, so simultaneously, like interchangeably, you can pick whatever you want from there, then it actually just doesn't matter what choice of B or C you choose. It's actually always just gonna reduce down to this basic, the, a plain geometric series. And hence we have the name hyper in hyper geometric. So I thought that's pretty cool. So let me actually basically reduces, deduces to a plain geometric series, so shown for geo, and then series. Hence, we have the name hypergeometric. Okay, so I thought that was really cool to show off. So with that out of the way, now let's actually get into the real calculation that we want to work on. So now we wanted to calculate the following. So 112z and then 112 negative z, then multiply with z squared. So let's actually first with the negative z input. So first now we have, so subscript two, of f1 of now our inputs one comma one semicolon two semicolon negative z then we actually just use our generalization for the gamma function over here so we just plug all that out so first i have gamma of two then divided by gamma of one then times gamma of one then we have our infinite sum over here n is equal zero so that leaves us with now just gamma of one plus n times gamma of one plus n again then divided by gamma of two plus n then of course multiply with just z to the power n and then divided by n factorial so what's nice is that first off gamma of one times gamma of one that's just one but also gamma of two is also equal to one so this is just going to be one so that's out of the way so now continuing forward so infinity n is equal to zero 
then now they share the same thing so i now that's just gamma square of one plus n then on the bottom over here we can actually use a nice trick that for the gamma relation identity to gamma of x plus one is really just equal to x times gamma of x so let me just rewrite this as a reminder so what that means is that i can actually rewrite our gamma of two plus n as the following so 1 plus n, and then multiply with gamma of 1 plus n. Well, I also forgot to mention that. I forgot. This is a negative z, so I have to fix this. This is actually going to be negative 1, then to the power n, and then multiply with z to the power n. So alternating series is what we have here. Okay, so now going back. So we have now this is negative 1 to the power n, and z to the power n divided by n factorial. Okay, and then moving forward, that gamma square of 1 plus n, so we have a term that cancels, so I have a 1 plus n on the bottom, but then now we have a gamma of 1 plus n on the top. We'll note that gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial, so we just use utilize the 1 plus n into the input, then we actually just get an n factorial in there, and then that will just cancel that from the denominator, so now that just leaves us with the infinite sum at n is equal 0, of negative 1 to the power n and then divided by n plus 1 multiplied with z to the power n so next if i were to expand this out i have but notice that ln of 1 plus x is simply just equal to x and then subtract so the taylor series divided by 2 add this with x cubed divided by 3 minus x to the power 4 divided by 4 and so on and so forth what if i were to divide up x so i have ln of 1 plus x and then divided by x Simply, I have 1, then subtract x divided by 2, plus x squared divided by 3, minus x cubed divided by 4, so on and so forth, that if you actually expand this out, this is actually exactly the same thing as we have over here, but of course this is in terms of z, so therefore this is actually just equivalent to ln of 1 plus z, and then divided by z. Now, up next is now we got to deal with the positive, so let me actually just go back and... Um, put this back as what we originally found. Okay, so now let's next calculate the other um, hypergeometric evaluation. So one uh, comma, not a semicolon. So comma, one, semicolon two, and then semicolon now positive z. So this is actually just very in a similar fashion, just like from before. So if I were to do the same thing, so that means plug in the inputs gamma of two, then gamma of one times gamma of one, then our infinite sum, n is equal zero of gamma of 1 plus n, then multiply with gamma of 1 plus n, divided by gamma of 2 plus n, then this is just the positive, so luckily it's not an alternating series, of z to the power n divided by n factorial, and then actually this just follows from the similar argument slash, well, similar reasoning, because with all the calculations over here, so what it deduces, so of course now just taking one step at a time, infinity, n is equal zero of gamma square, then one plus n, then divided by, so using that same identity with the relations of the gamma function again, so I have one plus n divided by gamma of one plus n, or multiply, excuse me, then z to the power n, and then divided by n factorial. Then we do the same thing again to finding that gamma of n is the same thing as n minus one factorial, we just actually just plug that input after canceling one of the gamma of one plus n terms. So reducing all that out and then that cancels the n factorial over there, so now we just left with infinity, n is equal zero, uh, z to the power n, and then divided by one plus n. And then with that expansion, we'll note that negative ln of one minus z simply is written as z, and then add this with z squared divided by two, add this with z to the three divided by three, then add this with z to the power 4 divided by 4, so on and so forth. So let's say I were to divide z to both sides. So negative ln of 1 minus z, then divided by z. Then simply we're just left with 1, then add this with z divided by 2, add this with z squared divided by 3, add this with z cubed divided by 4, so on and so forth. That you expand this out, that's actually the same thing written as the exact same thing over here um, with that expansion. So that means that's negative ln of 1 minus z, and then divided by z. Okay, so we have two things that now we can actually just multiply together and then that actually concludes our video. So in general, so we have that the following expansion, rather the calculation of the hypergeometric series, the function, excuse me, that's the basic case to put it. 
So of one comma one semicolon one or two, and then multiply with Z, then multiply two F one. So same thing yet again, but instead we have a negative argument. So negative Z and then multiply with Z square. Then of course we have that just plugging everything back together. I have LN of one plus Z, then multiply by Z, then multiply with negative ln of one minus z divided by z, then times z squared, then of course we have z squared that they cancel out. And so therefore the final answer for the evaluation over here that we want to better simplify down to is that this is just equal to negative ln of one minus z multiplied with ln of one plus z. And so there we have it, our final answer just like that. So I hope you learned something cool about these um, hypergeometric series and you know a lot of the really the nice close form for the game of function in terms of the game of function. And you know, we're putting that all together, it's um pretty cool. So there you have it. Uh, you know, maybe in the future I'll actually talk about um, the generalized hypergeometric functions. You guys let me know on that if you think I should take care of that. So yeah, that's uh pretty cool if you ask me.